Welcome to uh, the first session uh, um, of uh, the master class, as I call it, of Coffee with Fatima. And today we're going to do um, mastery in social media. You guys have all mentioned this. How do I get more followers? How do I get more likes on Instagram? What type of post should I be sharing? How can I um, increase engagement per post? And uh, where do I start? These are just some of the things that might be going through your mind. Um, but the um, most fundamental thing is that um, at the end of the day, right, it's not about the number of followers you have, right? Especially when you're running a business, it's not about the amount of followers you have, but rather it's about the engagement, right? How much are you engaging with those people? Um, what sort of difference are you making to them? You see, that a lot of businesses, um, they don't answer uh, to the needs of the consumers, right? They do what they do and then they sort of just put it out there. It's very, very important to understand what are the needs of your consumers, right? So this is fundamentally called market research, right? Understanding what is it that your customers want, what is it that they need, and then providing products and services to cater to them, right? So the reason why I talk about um, the importance of connecting with your customers and um, and and you know creating this sort of engagement is because then you get a loyal base of customers, right? Um, how many people always think that uh, they're out there to get more and more business? Who's out there to get more and more customers all the time? Yeah, pretty much everyone, right? But uh, if you're not retaining your old customers, what's the point, right? So you have to take care of your customers as well. It's very important to retain and take care of, and, and this is something that, because I consult a lot of people and they're always like, I want more people, I want more business, but if you're not taking care of the people that are already coming to you, then you're really losing out, right? So this is pretty much very, very um, significant part, right? So um, in the last maybe two, three years, um, through special tools and techniques, I've managed to grow my following. I've managed to connect with my consumers and create a brand. Okay, it's not easy. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight uh, because I'll tell you something that um, as much as you, you think, people can see through you. Okay, they can see whether you're being authentic online, they can see whether you're being fake. They, these things are all um, uh, very easily sort of read, right, by people. So always make sure that whatever you're providing, whether it's a product or a service, that you're being completely authentic online, you know? So, um, because I'm a marketer, I will use my own examples uh, to, to give you tips and techniques, okay? Um, so, first tactic is very, very, very easy. You know, use the obvious call to action, right? So, um, whatever you're doing in your visuals, right? Always say, you know, if you like this, you know, uh, share it. If you like this post, post share it, right? So, let's say um, you're in the beauty business, right? And uh, you're a makeup artist, okay? And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of competition right now. Um, the problem is that a lot of people are not ready to give out free information, right? So, uh, something that customers would really enjoy or like is if, let's say, you said, here are three tips to prep your skin before you um, put on makeup, for example. Okay, excuse, so guys, I will come to you guys, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Um, the reason why this is important is because you're constantly thinking about your customers' needs and wants, right? Um, even though you're not directly selling your product. You see, what happens is I, I see a lot of social media um, sort of uh, pages and it's just like posts and posts and posts of your product. Nobody cares. You're not connecting with people. If you keep just posting your product online, no one is going to, it's not attractive. I know this firsthand because we, as, as a marketing director of METL, I agree, they, this is what used to happen, right? You're not connecting with people. They don't care that you are uh, putting photos of your wheat flour or let's say your gym or your, you know, your, uh, your football pitch, right? How is that going to help me, right? So for example, Create a video, make a video of someone's experience 
at your at your gym or at your soccer pitch right call an influencer ask them to come and give their experience of uh, playing at your pitch you understand the, it's a very small differences that you can make but they make a huge impact and i'm telling you this because i've done it myself i've seen what a huge impact is, it has um and i want to go and talk a little a little bit about um this concept of um finding your why in your business right so a lot of companies right they understand what they're doing they understand how they're doing what they're doing right but they don't understand why they're doing it so today if i ask you okay um i gonna why do you do what you do okay. okay great right so you have your answer the problem is that a lot of people will be like okay i make uh, cakes you know i bake cakes this is how i bake them but i don't know why i'm doing it right like i don't understand why i'm doing it and then it's very hard for you to relay that to your customer right so even if you have to get in front of a camera and try to connect with your customer explain to them talk to them about your journey you know talk to them about where you started talk to them about what it is that you how are you with whatever you're doing going to benefit them right it's not about you and the business it's about how is it that you're going to benefit them and i'll tell you a story what used to happen before is we would um, produce so many products right and we would just put them out in the market one by one by one right and it came to a point where people are like we don't want this this is these pro- we don't want these products right these are not helpful for us um because we were not trying to understand what customers wanted we're not doing the right market research right so it's very important to go ahead and do the right market research and really um really understand the consumer mindset right what is it like for example you you said you have a gym right um try to understand that what value addition can you provide to your customers through a simple survey it it takes a few seconds but through a simple survey what value addition could i provide to you that would help you come to my um to my gym right and by doing this you're constantly collecting data as well right which is something i really want to talk about that in whatever business you're in make sure you have a database and keep growing that database because those are your customers right those are then you don't have to go look for more customers because those are people who already either um come to your shop used your service been you know so it's very very important to keep these things in mind right hey guys clear so far okay um basically uh it's very important to create an emotional connection with your consumer right um whether it's online or offline you have to make sure that you are really um that you are sort of arousing some sort of emotion in the in your consumer right because otherwise it's sort of just blank whatever post you have whatever um service or product you're trying to sell it has to and you know sometimes you're thinking if you're selling biscuits how do you do that and i'll come to that later that even something as simple as selling biscuits or like pencils how is it that you can create this sort of emotion within your con- uh, consumers right um so here uh leverage instagram connections right um it's just a matter of asking so basically you know uh when i post my my posts it's just a matter of telling somebody tag a friend okay or share this with someone okay um ask questions within your posts it's really really important because that means that you care about what people think right and um i'll come to this later but it's also very important to respond right when people post and you're not responding that just means you don't care right you're just posting to get your uh you know product and service out there but you don't really care about what people think right so it's very very important to keep engaging with people right um yeah and improve your captions so this is something really important that i wanted to talk about um i see a lot of uh, people who post their products and then they're like here for example here is our new soccer field no <laughs> okay tell a story okay and uh, i'm writing my second book and it's about storytelling basically and the fundamental importance of story storytelling if i tell you a story you're going to remember it better than if i 
just mention to you what products and services I have, right? It's going to it's going to make a bigger difference, right? So however it is, whatever you're posting, make sure that you're telling a story so you're connecting with people, right? And that you're able to sort of um, uh, reach into their emotions and, you know, uh, so whether it's a story about how um, your product has helped someone, um, whether you're in skincare, has helped someone brighten their face, okay? Or um, how your, your product has uh, touched the lives of people, okay? Whatever it is, make sure that you're telling a story. So I'll give you an example for, like, for our, our products, right? Um, when I started um, doing the marketing, I remember that there was no connection with the consumer. Right? We were at a point where people were just like, we were just pushing things through the distribution channel and nobody was buying them. Because why would they buy our product? What, was, what kind of emotion were we sort of um, conveying to people, right? So what I decided to do, and I've written about this a lot, is that I created a campaign right, called Uskate Tama which means don't lose hope, right? And through the campaign, I was telling stories of how people have gone through adversity and challenges. And it was through that and through this whole storytelling method that I was able to sell my products, right? So whatever it is, engage people and make sure that you're creating sort of emotion with your consumers, right? So if you're, you said you're in the events business, right? So how, for example, you can talk a little bit about how, um, a family came in and there was a wedding, but what were the emotions behind the wedding? Yeah, it might not have everything directly to do with the, 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 the service, the product you provided, but how were you guys able to help out? You understand? It's very important to keep these things in mind. Um, yeah, so again, I'm giving my own example, okay? Self-marketing. So um, this is basically a... a um, I had a session with people from Bajaj, right? And I talked a little bit about how, what were some of the things that I learned during the meeting, okay? Um, and I'm giving examples of my personal page because I don't want to give examples of METL, you know, as a, as a company. I want to give examples of my own work, okay? My own, like, the, the sort of, um, the, the page that I handle, okay? And how I've managed to grow my business, okay? Um, so I talk a little bit about what I learned, what went, what happened, what was the process behind it, and through that I was able to get so many people writing to me, and either um, they were able to connect with me, they were able to understand what was going on, right? So here, it's uh, it was more of a um, a post about my fitness, okay, and how um, so many times in life, you know, we just you know that. Uh, it was, it was an emotional story. I said I was younger and I was often told I was just average um, and I was lazy um, and I didn't really pay attention to what was happening but then, you know, I was tired of being average and this is what I did, you know, and the whole concept of inspiring people to um, just do it and not give up in life, right? So make sure you're connecting with people's emotions in whatever industry or business you're in, right? And I know sometimes it's hard, like how do you connect wheat flour? or like oil, right? But you can, and I'll show you later how you can do it, but you can do it. Okay, so here's um, some things that you can note down, right? So how do you write a caption, okay? Um, first and foremost, it's uh, make sure that you're telling stories, okay? Tell stories that people will remember. Um, who's seen Nike ads? Nike, Nike ads, who's seen Nike? Yeah, okay, what? Have you seen how amazing their adverts are? Yeah. It's because basically through the adverts they're telling stories, right? Okay, so there's, a, there's an ad by Nike, it's called Dream Crazy. And there's literally no merchandise on there. Like they've not promoted their product like directly at all. But the reason why it went viral is because the story was that it was, it was, um, the whole ad was trying to push people to whatever that whatever that whatever goals and dreams and sort of aspirations they have, they can do it, right? They can do whatever, and they've shown examples of athletes and people who have struggled but managed to 
get to where they want to be, right? So they basically had shown no merchandise. It was very subtle. In the way, and so when you guys go home, go and check out the ad because it's really cool. Just how basically they um, they were able to do it through telling stories, right? Um, make sure that you're evoking some sort of emotion. Um, you know, uh, tell a story, evoke emotion. Make sure that people are understanding. Uh, you know that um, they have they have some sort of connection to you in the post, right? Um, make sure that you're keeping it real. So don't like lie please because people will find out you're lying and then it's just going to suck so keep it um, as authentic as you can uh, nowadays i think that unfortunately the world is getting to a point where things are becoming more and more fake so try and keep being authentic in your posts you know um, connect with your audience and i say this a lot because i do it a lot um, whenever i'm posting things i provide a lot of free tips and techniques and things like that because my why is to genuinely help people develop their businesses and um, do better and be better and push themselves, okay? That is what I, why I do what I do, right? Um, and so it's very, very important that even as a company, you have an obligation to your consumers, to people around you, right? So one really great way to get people interested in what you are doing is to make sure that you are you know, giving out free information to them, giving them tips and techniques on how to, you know, like for example, if you have a gym, right? Post a video about, hey, these are three things you can do to like exercises you can do for to, to develop better abs. Do you understand? It's not directly promoting your gym, but you're gonna have somebody doing it at your gym, right? And it's helping them. And they're gonna think, wow, these people really care, right? This is what sets me apart from everybody else. You know, and I'm, I cannot stress this enough. Like I see so many people just providing, um, I see so many people just basically having posters and they're just, their their services and their products. Please stop doing it. No one's looking at that stuff. Like it, it's tiring for people to just constantly see the same thing. So instead it's important to sort of, how can you be different from everyone else, right? Um, and explain your why and i've said this a lot and i've seen how much of a difference it makes explain your journey explain why you decide like if you're if you're an entrepreneur and you started your company explain why you started it. if you don't want to talk about it yourself get somebody else to talk about it from your team but make sure that these things happen right explain your why okay so there's a small exercise okay basically <clears throat> there's these two photos that i have um you guys all know who this is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Serena Williams. Okay, so there is Serena Williams and then this is the Serengeti, okay? And so I want you guys to, through the, the tips that I've given you, um, try to uh, write a caption, okay? So let's say, um, it's, it's like a test, okay? I gave you one or two of them. You can pick whichever one you want. Write a caption that is gonna get my attention. Let's say I was going on Instagram, okay, and I'm a travel agent. So for the, for, for, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, the one in Serengeti. Let's say I'm, I'm, I'm looking for an, a travel agency, okay, to sort of work with. And I want to go to Serengeti. And you're, you're the travel agent, okay, and you have to write a caption for this post and get my attention. What would you say? Okay, so that or... Um, let's say I'm interested in, I'm confused, I don't know if I should buy Nike, Adidas, or all the other brands in the world. Tell me why I should buy Nike. If I see, um, if let's say I'm scrolling through and like there's Adidas and Nike and all these other brands, so pick one and write a a sort of a caption and then let's discuss it. Today I I spoke about uh, Andrew. yeah, did you guys see my post? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I talked, you see, I could have easily posted the photo and that's it, right? Okay. So I, I, what I did is I posted the photo, right? I could have posted the photo and that's it, right? And been like, okay, this is great. Like somebody painted a picture of me. I'm so famous. Amazing, right? It's not, the, that was not the point, right? The point for me is to 
because my my work is to motivate people, right? So I told a story through my post. I said I met him and that basically through speaking with him I realized that he spent over 60 hours, right? Um uh sketching this for me and these are some of the things I learned that things don't happen overnight you have to be patient right so in the caption I've written here are some of the things I learned <laughs> that things don't happen overnight you have to be patient right um, that you can't just give up right you have to make sure that you um, keep persevering and you have to keep working towards your goal right always make sure that whatever you're doing you're helping other people Right? That you are pushing the human race forward, right? That whether if someone has, you know, because what's happened in this world is people have become very selfish, right? And it's sad. It's a, it's a sad world. And so um, for me, this is very, very important. That how are you able to help another human being, right? And uh, so these are some of the lessons I wrote that I learned. Yeah? So I told a story. I could have easily just posted the photo and um, not said anything and just been like, hey, artwork, you know? And so, I'll, let me help you with one of your posts, okay? Let's say you, um, you did a bride, okay? You uh, uh, did makeup for a bride, is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so you posted her photo, right? You get it easily, which is what everybody else that did, does, is bridal photo, photo makeup done by me, okay? I don't, this is not going to help me, right? I want emotion. So what I would like to see is if you said, you know, um, for example, you know, it was so it was so nice to see how, you know, at the beginning when I met this bride, I'm just making up a story, I don't know, that she was, um, you know, she was so nervous and it was nice to speak to her throughout the process and to calm her down and, you know, I did her makeup and, you know, I felt that she, you know, we were able to bond over it. It doesn't have to do with just your makeup. It's telling a story, right? And that is the things that people, those are the things that people remember. Always, trust me. So, you, does that make better sense now? Yeah? You know? And, you've, and you have so many people, you know, right? Like today, you know, you can, even putting in statistics, like, you know, I, you can, like, what is your story? How did you learn all this? You studied, right? Like your mother of... Right, you you studied all this. You keep you know you keep trying to um, um, uh, better your skills every year, right? So these are things that you should put in your story. That this is my name. This is where I started. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to help other people. Speak louder, okay? Um, speak with confidence. You know I'm not kidding. I have gone to sessions. Side note where I don't know what is going on and what I'm talking about but because I speak with confidence people listen to me okay so please when you're speaking you know your body language I'm gonna tell you one more story okay? I have to tell a lot of stories um, there is a, a, a lady called Amy Cuddy okay and go and watch her TED talk it's amazing she talks about the importance of body language in anything you do in life whether you're approaching customers whether you are an employee and you're going to go and seek for a job okay whether you're going to go and meet someone a friend maybe your your you know your partner whatever it is right and what Amy Cuddy says is that um, when what we do is that we start to make ourselves small right because we're nervous so we'll speak softer our body language will become like this and it makes you already feel like you are losing the game you understand and a lot of people so whether it is your um penny sorry can you get the door just whether it is whether it is your employer or it is uh, anyone they will be able to under understand your uh, body language very quickly they'll see it they'll sense it and they'll realize how you are okay and so you can fool your mind into confidence now i'll tell you why okay so she talks about power poses Okay, and the power poses are that two to three minutes before you go into an interview or you come, like, you know, you, let's say you're nervous about something, to do these power poses and it, it rewires your brain into believing that you are confident, right? And so I'll tell you why I'm telling you about all this is because I gave a TEDx talk recently and I had never spoken without a paper. 
right? Like, I mean, like actually like followed a structure without a piece of paper, okay? And I was very nervous. It was the first time that um, I've spoken at a lot of events, but it was the first time where it's like a huge, like a huge event where I didn't have a piece of paper. And um, I was doing these power poses every day before I would, you know, uh, sort of, uh, uh, before I would uh, go and you know speak on stage um, but there was a, a lady there and I remember she was sitting on a table and she put her head down okay literally she went to cry and she was going up next so I looked at her and I was like what are you doing get up like you can if you do this you're not gonna be able to speak on stage like you're going to your body is already telling your brain that you're finished like that you're going to completely mess up so told her get up and do these poses and so it's just basically you know power poses is making yourself bigger right so in the animal kingdom how do animals scare away other animals right they make themselves feel, look bigger right so that's exactly what you do right so i will you can you can google the power poses or i can send them to you they're very simple but the whole idea is that you fool your brain to be confident. Okay, so I'm sorry I went on a tangent, but <clears throat> please, you have to do these things when you're speaking to anybody, even as a business, as someone who's running a business. If you are going to a potential client or a customer or anyone, you have to make sure that you exude this kind of confidence to them. Otherwise, they're just going to right away feel that even though your product is the best thing in the world, they're not going to have confidence in your product because they don't have confidence in you, right? Okay. Um, so, so basically, I think that um, I've stressed the importance of how, like, how your caption, right? And how fundamentally important it is, right? Um, and honestly, I cannot stress this. The more I realize I've gotten a lot of engagement and, um, and I'll tell you this, I'm very proud of it. Um, it's not about the followers, honestly. I, when I go through my posts, I get a lot of people engaging with me because I write back to them, because I tell stories, because I know that they keep coming because they know that they read a story and so they want to keep coming back to my page to listen to a story, right? Um, and learn something. So keep these things in mind because they're really, really important, yeah? So the next slide was actually about hashtags, right? Um, and um, this is one thing I've noticed, right? Don't like overdo the hashtags. Like, you know, sometimes they're really weird and I read through them and I'm like, what are people writing? You know, like make sure that they are in tune with what you're actually doing. You understand? Like, because they're not like, like for like and like, you know, I, this is just really weird, right? So. <laughs> if you're, uh, you know, in any business, you're, if you're an artist, right, you can, you can use hashtags that are related to art, right? So if you see, and I have an example um, um, of myself, I use my own example. So these are three different kinds of posts, okay? This one is a motivational post, and if you see, it's about leadership, motivation, success, business. So they have to do with the, the, the video, right? This is about fitness. So the, the sort of the posts I've written are about fit, the hashtags I've used are fitness related, right? And this one is about women empowerment, right? So they all have to do with um, the sort of, the, the kind of uh, message you're trying to send, right? Um, they can't just be random. And that's very important, right? You're not, Look, all of you guys are in business and you want to grow your business, you want to grow your brand, right? You're not there looking just for likes, right? Well, of social media where with a click of a button, like, you know, overnight you will get so many recommendations, you will get so much feedback, right? So, all I'm saying is that make sure that you're, like I said, it all has to come to authenticity, right? If you're, you, you believe in your products and you believe in your services, and if you feel that, you know, um, that certain things are going to help you, then do it. And I'm not saying don't do it. There's no formula, right? But I'm just saying that these are some of the things that have helped, yeah, that have helped me. You know, and that have really um, uh, sort of... Uh, and I, I realized, you know, when you do use certain hashtags that are random, you know what people do? They start advertising on your page. It's really annoying. 
Yeah, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Like, they'll start like writing Especially things like, and, and, and yeah, they like start advertising it as really annoying to me. You know, so just keep it relevant. Yes. You know, and 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 just understand that, right? Um, people engage with posts that are remarkable. Yes, don't jump off a cliff with a bicycle, please. But um, uh, by remarkable, I mean. Uh, Make it fun, and I'll show you. Okay, um, what on a company has done um, with something so simple, and how they've managed to make these things remarkable. Okay, so I'm just saying that it doesn't matter how. I mean, dude, I sell like water and oil and wheat flour, but I I somehow know how to make it fun for people, right? So um, it's very it's very important to sort of have um, to catch people's attention. Right? You've seen like on the internet and on Instagram like the model flip challenge and the, 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 the like that bucket challenge. What was it called? The ice, ice bucket ice. challenge. Like, the reason why they went viral is because it was like it was something remarkable, right? It was something like out of like that was kind of cool and you know everybody knew about it, right? So try to make sure to keep like people on edge, you know? <laughs> yeah, so like I said, humor us, you know, just have emotion basically with your posts, you know. Um, uh, people engage with posts that de deliver valuable information, you know. Um, make sure that whatever, uh, so nice outside. Um, make sure that uh, basically, sorry, um, you know, when you're in the office the whole day and then you see like the sea, you just like, yes, it's good. It's a um, nice feeling. Um, make sure that yeah, you're providing um, uh, what do you call it uh, value for your consumers, right? In whatever way that you you can, right? Yeah. So um, okay. Um, here are some ways to boost your social media strategy. Okay. Um, develop a multi-channel approach. Okay. Um, and find your target audience on different platforms. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So this is the slide, and then we'll take a break for those who this is it's not in the month time yet, right? No. Um, that for just for coffee and to chat, um, and then we'll go. We'll continue. So basically, whatever I post on Facebook, okay, or Instagram, I will post on LinkedIn. I will post on Twitter. I will post on all different platforms, right? But. Um, as you know, Twitter has a limitation on how much you can post, right? And you can't post the same thing on all different platforms, right? You can't sort of, if you have to, uh, there are people who market really weird businesses on LinkedIn. Like, LinkedIn is a professional network. You cannot post certain things on LinkedIn, right? So make sure that you cater towards different platforms, right? Um, but, uh, create a way for users to follow your brand across the different platforms, right? Because make sure that whatever you have is easily accessible to people, that people can find you everywhere, right? Um, and so here is just one very easy thing. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's in your book. Um, this simple donut example, okay? So um, on Instagram, you would post a photo of your, you know, like picture of your donut. Right? On YouTube, um, you would post a recipe of your donut, for example. Right? Um, on Pinterest, you know, um, see the best donuts, recipes to cook at home. Right? Uh, what else? Like, yeah, so on Twitter, see the news about the best donuts in a certain city or a country. Right? Um, on LinkedIn, you would read an article about Tim Hortons. Um, acquisition and their business impacts, right? So it's it's not in there. No. I put it in there. It's there. Last week. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's just a little bit different. But basically, <laughs> but but basically, what I'm trying to say is that make sure that you're. Uh, and I've seen this firsthand because um, whenever I post something and I'm advertising it um, and it's on different platforms, I realize that um, I get a different number of kind of customers, right? Um, and so keep these things in mind whenever you're posting. Um, you know, when you're when you're on LinkedIn, you won't really post like 
a video of like you making donuts, right? I don't think that it's a, it's a, it's a, net, it's a very professional network, right? Um, so it's just to keep these things in mind. Um, let's take the coffee break. You guys can, we have some biting, but um, you can ask, ask me questions, I can answer, and then we'll go back to the site. That's okay. Okay, um, so maximize impact with visuals, okay? Um, so, one of the things that, um, that I, I really focus on is not putting too much words, too many words on um, a lot of my posts, right? Because, first of all, when it comes to reach, um, Instagram will not give you as much reach when there's too much words on a poster or on a, on a post. Okay, so when you post it, you will see people will not reach, it will not reach as many people when there's too many words. So use fewer words, right? And um, make sure that the photos that you are using, you know, that they're of good quality, you know, that they are um, in one way or another telling a story, you know, that um, it's not the same sort of poster over and over and over again, you know? Be a little bit creative. So one of the things that, for example, you can post about, like you own an events company, right? Behind the scenes of a setup. Right? Showing people the amount of work that goes into doing what you do. Right? It's good because then people are like, oh my god, this is not like a joke. You know, it's not like it's the look at the amount of work that is going into this, right? Um, whether it's you you have your own uh, what do you call it? Cosmetics, not cosmetics, sorry, what is it? Organic products, right? So how do you make it? Right? So showing people how you make it, right? Or like how you handle the product. It's so important because it shows people that it's not something that is just, you know, like comes out of thin air. I, I'm not kidding, you know, what um, What I did for one of my adverts is that I took a video of how a water bottle, okay, and a soda bottle is how it starts with pallets of plastic to how it goes to the end consumer. Okay, and the basically the entire process of it. See, people when they drink water, how much do you really think about what goes into the process of making water? Nobody, right? It doesn't even go through your brain. The thing is, I know how much goes into it because I go to the factory and I've understood the process. And it's not a joke. It's a lot of time and effort and a lot of quality control. It's it's something that um, unless you show. People will not understand, and you can't blame them. You can't just, you know, today, for example, uh, you uh, charge a certain amount, okay? And people are like, ah, oh, stupid, why you should just call this woman charging this much, or, you know, come on, like, you know? But if you show people the worth of your work, they will begin to understand that, okay, now I get it. Now I get what goes into it. Now I get why she's charging this much. You understand, right? So show the process like, of your work, you know? I think that that's really, really important as well, you know? Okay, so how to use uh, visuals. Um, it's not how to visualize, that I can teach you also, but how to use visuals, I'm so sorry for that. <coughs> um, <laughs> uh, how to visualize is another session that we'll be providing, um, so I will tell you about that, I'm just kidding. Um, how, to, how to use visuals. Um, make sure that the colors are vibrant, okay? Um, make sure you're using bold, bold kind of writing. Um, make sure you're using uh, pictures associated with emotion, things that tell stories. You know, if you see the accounts that are sort of, um, that go viral, right? It's because their pictures are like really, they stand out, right? There's something that like you just, you know, you see it and you're like, oh my God, this is like beautiful, right? So. <laughs> Um, these things are very, very important. You know, we as human beings, we like things that look aesthetically pleasing, right? So if you think you're gonna take a photo with your phone, okay, and like post it, please don't do that, okay? Even if you don't have to post that often, it's better you post nicer photos, okay? Are we, am I, am I, does that make sense? Does anyone have anything to say about that? No? You agree? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm saying this because uh, 
you know, unfortunately, this is how we are as humans. Yeah, we like to see things that are pretty. pretty. Okay, and they're, that are, you know, they're just like vibrant and nice. And so make sure that you are using these things when you're doing your um, branding. Yeah. Uh, find creative ways to delight people. Um, so get creative with your own products. Okay. Uh, be loyal. Use your own products all the time, please. You see, one thing about me. Um, I never, ever drink a competitor's product. <laughs> ever, ever, you will not see me. I'm not kidding. I, uh, I am one of those people I will go to a restaurant and I will take my own water. Because um, I am a market, I'm, I'm, I'm the head of marketing. I cannot use, yeah, I understand that, you know, they, that you're in a restaurant and that, you know, that they're giving you Kilimanjaro, but I don't want to use it. I want but to use my own water, right? So um, be loyal to your products, right? If you're not gonna use them yourself, how can you sell them to people, right? And I think people don't understand this, this phenomenon, right? That be ready to use your own products and services and instead of just, you know, talking about it, you know? And you will not catch me. Um, I went to a conference, actually. It was, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, and um, it was uh, the, the head of Sayona is a very good friend of mine, okay? And uh, we're good friends, but we are competitors. And so it was, the event was there. And they had the Soyana water everywhere. And what I did is I took my water up to on the stage. Because it's my product. I don't <laughs> drink Soyana. I'm not giving them mileage, you know. Um, it's not a bad thing. You know, sometimes I take it a bit too far. But, you know, I'm one of those people very loyal to my brand, you know. And so it's important to be loyal to your, to your brand and to your products and to your services. So I'm going to talk to you about the Oreo effect. Who knows about Oreos? Yeah, Oreos, the biscuit, you know, it. Yeah. okay, you scared me, <laughs> oh my god, I was like, how are we going to talk about this, okay, um, okay, so, it's a pretty simple product, like, it's literally like a chocolate biscuit, and then you have, like, a cream inside and chocolate, it's a very simple product, okay, but people are crazy about Oreos, okay, and the reason why is because they do a phenomenal job on their social media, so, um, for example, if you look at uh, their Instagram, right? And imagine with an Oreo, like with a biscuit, what they're able to do on their social media, right? They like, um, they have like different ways to basically uh, uh, showcase the biscuit, you know, to get the consumer thinking. You know, they, they show like a lot of, the, it's a lot of creativity, you know, in the way that they work, right? So I'll give you an example of what they do on Instagram. Sorry, that's called um, <clears throat> uh, Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, they're so, it's so like, uh, to a certain extent, it's so like simple, right? But it's just the, it's advertising, you know? And I mean, really, how creative can you get with an Oreo? That's why I've used the Oreo, but you can. You can get so creative. So if you go to their page, okay, and on Pinterest as well. So here they provide recipes, right? So like for Halloween, how can you use uh, Oreo recipes? Like no Oreos in your recipes, like for like Christmas, you know, all these different events. Like this is exactly what they do, right? So it's, it's really beautiful the way that they've managed to sort of um, uh, indirectly use their product, right? So for example, even for us, like, a uh, long time ago, I realized that we were just bombarding our audience with products, okay? Um, whether it was spaghetti or it was wheat flour, whatever it was, we were just like posting these products on our Instagram pages and Facebook pages. And I was like, what, what message is this? Like, it's, you don't understand, right? Like, if I was on the other end, would I want to buy it? No, because I don't get it. So what I started doing is um, I would provide a recipe of how you can use more spaghetti okay and make like how you can basically make a really good dish with more spaghetti and you know what what would happen is people would respond after making the spaghetti themselves and post pictures of it that's how you engage people right because you're giving them a value addition you're giving them 
a sort of a recipe, right? And so because you're giving them a recipe and you're like, hey guys, why don't you also, um, uh, you know, post your, you know, like post your dish as well. So they will go, they'll buy the spaghetti, you're, you're, you're marketing your brand and they will post it, right? And they will also show you how they've managed to use it. It's pretty cool, you know, the things that, that you can do these days online. Any questions? Dude, I can't be that good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, you guys don't have any questions. Did you see that? And so there's a guy who's missing a tooth, but um, and the guy and the, it says in the meme that um, I bet you didn't see his missing eyebrow. <laughs> yeah, because his tooth was missing, right? Because it's so important. So you see, whatever it is you're doing, right? Today, for example, when I go to a dentist, what's important to me? Do you know what's important to a human being when they go to a dentist? Yeah. So I will tell you, like, I'm freaked out about dentists. Like, I am one of those people that I only go to a certain dentist because I trust that person. And if that dentist is not there, I will, I will be in pain for five days, but I will not go to another dentist, right? So understand first your customers, what they are seeking, right? So they want to be comfortable right they want to feel comfortable right so how can you showcase that in a video okay you can you know nowadays people think that making adverts takes like this technology and like you need like i made a 400 dollar advert for my mo energy which is now mo extra brand it was 400 dollars advert now i think all my all the adverts i'm doing on um on my instagram are on, all done with a phone you can do everything on your phone. All you have to do is, you know, go to a patient and be like, hey, listen, you know, what were you feeling before, you know, you entered the hospital, you know, uh, and, and what, I will give you X amount of discount if you can give me a short testimonial about how you're feeling now. You know, what did you like about the service? It's so simple, you know, these are things that all that matter, you know, because what you're trying to, the message you're trying to send across Yes, I'm not a product or service, but I'm an experience, right? So what experience am I trying to get out of this? Yeah, so that's really important. And also like, you know, for example, providing some sort of, um, when, when customers walk in, you know, uh, so many times like, you know, when you have a reception, first when they walk in, there's a receptionist, right? Making sure she's friendly. Right? Yeah, you have you already freaked out and then you go in, the person's like freaking you out, you're just like, oh my god, like you're gonna have an aneurysm. You know what I'm saying, yeah? So these things have to be highlighted, right? Like you have to tell stories about how I am going to feel like I'm not going to feel anything. You know, my dentist, whenever he's working my teeth, he's talking to me, like constantly. Like, are you okay? You know, like you feel pain, you feel pain, you and Honestly speaking, if you asked me to give him a review, I would be like, I would never go to anyone else, right? And that's what you want. Because especially when in service companies, you are not even so much looking for new clients, you're looking for those clients to come back, right? So make sure that whatever you're providing is the best experience out there, yeah? So those are some, some ways that you can sort of, um, you know, also for example, on your page, right? Um, people don't know about gum disease. Okay, people don't know like simple things that like the importance of flossing. Okay, whatever it is, provide that free information because that way I know you care about me. As a client, I know that you're providing me with free information and that you care about me and I can rely on you. Right? So the, the problem is a lot of people don't do this. And I'm telling you because I've done it for years. Like I have sat and provided free information for years and years and years and it pays off. You know, um, so do that. Yeah. Was that helpful? Very much. Yeah. Oh, it died. Okay. Engage <laughs> comment commenters as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, okay. Be authentic. Like I said, people know when you're lying. People know when you're not truthful. You know, um, we're in an age. Like I said, there's so much fake stuff out there. Please try and be real, okay? Like, don't try and sell subpar products and services. Don't try and cheat the game. There's no need, okay?
okay? If you feel that you are of X amount of value or your product and your services of X amount of value, you sell it at that much. But don't try and cheat the game, okay? Like honestly, like don't do these things. Talk to your audience always. You know, um, statistically, when you post something, in the first seven minutes, when people start commenting, respond really quickly. Because people will be like, oh my God, these people are responding. So let me let us also give our feedback because they're listening to us, right? Everybody wants to be listened to, right? So this is really important. I see so many people, they don't respond. So then why do you want people to comment on your, on your, on your, like, you know, like on your sort of, uh, your uh, posts? There's no point, right? So make sure that you're responding, right? Collect feedback always, constantly. You know, like for example, you know, every two weeks, I'm, I'm saying nicely, like, you know, go online and be like, you know, hey guys, uh, what did you guys think of, you know, uh, the, the field, the quality, the this, that, what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you feel um, we could do to better our, our product or service? You know, and people will tell you. They will tell you what you can do to make things better because they're they're gonna benefit from it, right? Um, um, ask them what they want to see, right? Ask them. You can on Instagram, on Facebook. You can ask people what kind of content you want to see. What 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 kind of uh, uh, products you want to see better, right? Um, what kind of services uh, can help you, you know? So these are things that are, you know, what do you look for when you're looking uh, for a dentist? What are things that you look for? You will find it really strange. I know people in my family, they don't go to dentists. They will die of pain and keep taking pictures, but they will not go to dentists. Why? Because of things in their mind that we don't even know, right? So ask people, what is it that, you know, that what is one thing that scares you about the dentist or coming to the dentist or whatever and you'll see people are going to respond and they're going to tell you right what it is um and uh most engaged comments are seen the most this is like this i'm seeing through experience so again keep responding to people yeah yeah so this is uh on so organic reach for a lot of um on instagram has gone down a lot okay because you're looking for money this is how social media works right so even on facebook before your organic reach would be really high now it's become so little right so make sure that if it's certain products or services that you're trying to push that you promote them you know because your competitors are probably doing it as well yeah um okay this is why you have to be on social media whether you want to or you don't want to you have to be on social media because um 40 percent of fortune 100 companies are using instagram and um basically that is where everybody is at right now you know um even if today i'm trying to look for whatever a vendor or uh somewhere to buy products or makeup products or whatever i'm doing i will go online to search for it right so make sure you are online. If you're not seen, no one's gonna know about you. Even if you have the best products or services out there, yeah? Um, so um, just to finish up, what are some of the challenges that you guys are facing and maybe I can help you. Um, let me tell you something. Uh, that's it. Everybody's, uh, everybody has their own personal goals in their life, okay? Um, if you're happy being a homemaker, that's up to you, okay? If you are happy juggling 10,000 things at once, that's up to you, okay? So um, how to balance? There's no formula, okay, to balance your life. I don't, I don't think there's a formula. I think that you need to spend some time to take care of yourself mentally, to take care of yourself physically, emotionally, and to also handle these things. And if you think that any of those are being jeopardized, then you need to rethink things, okay? And I'm going to tell you honestly that the last couple of months I've been very bad at sort of uh, juggling all these things and I've overworked myself and I've seen the effect it has had on my body and it's not fair, right, on my body. So um, make sure that you are 
that you sort of, you know, plan, right? And that's why I introduced this journal because it's a good way to sort of um, keep yourself accountable. You know, the problem is people wake up in the morning, they write a list of 10 things they want to do that day. Come on, man. You wake up and your brain's already on like overdrive. And you're like, oh my God, I have to do 10 things and you're tired already. Three things, get three things done, it's enough. You know, uh, I read, uh, I watched this video and, and I do this every morning, right? You know, we all have maids and house help and all these things, right? Who, who does their bed? Tell me the truth. Who does their own bed? Mama, please. Who does their own bed? Your wife does not count. Yeah? Okay. So I've started this activity where when I wake up in the morning, I do, it's okay, I never used to. I do my own bed, right? Because it's a sense of accomplishment. First thing in the morning that you've finished something. It's something really small, but that you've done it. And, you, and this was a speech given, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I watch a lot of TED Talk, but by a guy in the military. Yes. And he said, if you want to be successful and happy, do your bed in the morning. First thing in the morning, right? So you see, make sure that you like have like a structure to your life. Make sure that you set aside time for different things. You know, like for example, for me, I make sure I work out every day, okay? I go and I run with my dog every single day because I have to. If that's for my own mind. That's my time. I try not to attend any calls at that time and I'm just, you know, that's what I do, right? To sort of switch off. So it depends on each and every person and their own case and how to balance it. But if you feel that it's sort of messing you up, mentally, physically, emotionally, which are all very important, it's not worth it. That's what the hustle is about. No, it's not. And go and read what I've written what the hustle is about. That's not my definition of a hustle. My definition of a hustle is, and I will read it to you, so you know I'm being authentic, is this, okay? Um, can I have that one, please? Sorry, um, Andrew, can I have that hustle, please? I just want to read the, what I said. I said that if you're anything like me, you're all about the hustle. This is why I've decided to release something that I believe personifies the word hustle. <coughs> Whether in your business life or in your personal life, this is going to give you an action plan and hold you accountable. To me, hustling doesn't mean overworking yourself and burning yourself out because you can't fully execute your passion without taking the necessary steps to take care of your mental, physical, and emotional needs as well. Which is what I told you exactly, yeah? It's about being resilient when you want to give up, but also about being kind to yourself. And most importantly, it's about pushing yourself to be a better person than you were yesterday. So be good, also. Yeah. yeah. So, um, like I said, be authentic, okay? I don't uh, just think. I want to end with one thing, okay? Um, a lot of people um, sort of gave me a lot of backlash about the charges that I had for this um, my my coffee sessions. Okay, and uh, I don't need to um, I don't need to explain myself to anybody because I believe that I am worthy of whatever that I charge, but. I think that it's important and it's time that I explain, okay, uh, why I do these things. I said that I, my sort of joy lies in pushing the human race forward. My joy lies in helping businesses grow, okay? But I want you guys to know where your money is going, okay? So I'm going to show you a video. And I really hope the sound is working. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but... No, it's not gonna work. Kwa 
kuwa na kazi nzuri na maisha mazuri na familia nzuri na pia unazalia kufanya kazi mbalimbali za maisha kwa mfano kupika kulima kufua kusuka na kazi nyingine mbalimbali na pia mazingira haya na hewa safi na madisha mazuri sehemu nzuri za kulalia mavazi malazi ambazo siwezi kupata magonjwa kirahisi rahisi na pia kuna huduma nzuri kwa mfano ukiumwa unapata dawa bila kucheleweshwa kikweli sehemu kama hii tunaweza kuicha kwa sababu imesaidia sana ni sehemu kubwa maisha yangu so i think it's done right Yeah. Okay. Um so thank you guys honestly for everything that you guys have come and that you have also made a difference today. And um like I said, I didn't need to explain myself, but a lot of people have given me backlash about my prices. Mm, and uh I do the things I do for a reason and I think that uh that uh I'm not undeserving of what I charge. I think it is fair but I don't need to explain myself but unfortunately just come to a situation where I've had to explain myself and uh and I'm just saying that thank you guys all for coming because you're making a bigger impact in such things. Yeah.